You've got four hours to build your app and that four hours starts right now. What could you create if you had 30 minutes to plan and four hours to build? I think people can put something together in this amount of time. I built 12 games. This is gonna be, this is gonna be the first episode with a fist fight in it. Today, we're gonna build an app to help out the local food scene. Four hours, I'll probably build a million dollar idea. It wouldn't be this show if I didn't completely screw myself by making it too big. My app is shaping out to be an eight or a nine, not out of 10. The fine finish line. So join me, your friend Jason, along with John, Maxie, and Natalie as we take on the Web Dev Challenge. Uh -oh. Before we get started, I wanna talk a little bit about the tools we have at our disposal. The Raycast team wasn't able to send anybody in, so I'm gonna talk about it for a minute. They call it the shortcut for everything. It's a replacement for your apps, or your, your Macs like search bar. And one of the biggest things that we have access to today is their AI pro features. So if at any point we need to generate dummy data, if we wanna to talk to a chat bot about what our idea could be, if we want to generate some images, whatever it is, we can do that all right from Raycast, so make sure you take advantage of that. And our other sponsors are Convex and Clerk, and I'm gonna let Alexis and Tom come up and talk a little bit about what those do. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm a software engineer at Convex, and I'm from San Francisco. I think people can put something together in this amount of time. I've speed run these docs before. I know that it can be done in just a few minutes, but it's always hard to follow instructions, hop over to the Clerk website, copy something, come back to your app. So I'm worried that might eat up some time. Convex is a backend and a database, but the database is inside of the backend, or as we like to say, the backend is inside of the database. So you get your backend stuff. You, have, you can have endpoints, you can have HTTP endpoints or these other protocol endpoints. You get scheduled functions, you can have cron jobs, you have full text search, vector search. So with Convex, we've got browsers and they subscribe to a query. They say, give me a list of all the messages. And then another browser can be subscribed to the same query. And then when one of your clients, when it makes a change, that change is broadcast out to all the different front ends. So great for live stuff, great for not thinking about consistency because you just get it. Great for built-in transactions you get by combining a database and a backend. If you need to store something, if you need to run some tasks on a server, Convex is there for you today. I'm Alexis, I'm from Miami, Florida, and I'm a software engineer at Clerk. I'm not sure how much they're gonna be able to pull off in four hours, but I'm definitely excited to see what they can get. All right, so Clerk is a user management platform that you're going to be using to add authentication to your application in minutes. It's super easy. Say that you have an app. All you have to do is drop in one of our beautifully designed front end components to your application and you have authentication in seconds. Say you want your users to use an email and a password. Well, it's that simple where you can configure it into your component, you drop it in, and then your user will enter their information. It will send that information to Clerk. Clerk will authenticate your user and they will be signed into your app. Clerk also offers different components like a user button. So similar to what you see on Google, you'll have full user management in your application. Convex and Clerk work together great. They were the first authentication provider that we integrated with. Um, you, can, you have a variety of options. My favorite is using Clerk to deal with your authentication and then you use Clerk webhooks to update the Convex database if you want to know about changes to your users in Convex. But you can also just use Clerk for auth and then use the JWT on the front end that you get from Clerk to authenticate as being that user. So now that we know how our tools work, we've got 30 minutes and your 30 minutes to plan starts right now. Whoa, some serious planning going on here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. See, this is the trap that I fall into every time where I, I'm like, this is easy. This won't take me any time at all. I'll just be able to whip this out. Um, but don't look at it. Don't, don't, don't spoil it. <laughs> My biggest challenge whenever I do one of these is that I, I can see something that is conceptually simple, but the devil's in the details, right? So when, when I start thinking like, well, it's just a list of places, right? It's like, easy, but then it's like, wait, I need an admin screen for the places. I need a, a admin screen for making the list. I have the users tied to all that. So it starts to really snowball. And a lot of times I'll oversimplify and just back myself into a corner where I can't get any of it done. No, so far it's really good. Simple, easy to follow. I don't want to say simple, but easy to follow. So, I'm feeling good. Like the parts that I didn't know how I was going to integrate, uh -huh. clearly lined down the docs. 
I'm Natalie, and I'm a front-end engineer at a startup called Jaching. I'm gonna kind of wrap around the Google Places API and build a text-based game in the style of Oregon Trail. If you remember, then you've had a good life. I'm incredibly confident that I'm gonna pull this off in four hours. Are you kidding me? Like, first of all, I just have like the best idea. Second of all, I basically invented JavaScript. So, how could I lose? All right, Tom, I'm, I'm doing it. Oh, you're doing it? Okay, okay, I'm here for you. I just made an account for you. Great, you, appreciate it. Your One more, that's in our little you know, internal users graph, that's one more. Yeah, it's every, hockey stick. Yeah, yeah, that's right, <laughs> great. It starts today. My name is John, I'm from Seattle, Washington, and I work at Vercel as a design engineer. The thing that I want to build today is I want to solve the problem of like a bunch of, a bunch of people inside of your friend group. Everyone wants to go to a different restaurant, so I'm building a game to help decide which restaurant we're going to. The most challenging part is probably multiplayer, but this is probably like my fourth time building like a multiplayer app. So I've already gone through all of the pain of like the initial learning curve, so hopefully today is painless. Do the queries have to happen on the client? Do they have to happen? No, you can do it on the server too. Oh, I see. Um, with they're not real time though if they're on the server. Oh, can you can you get like a can you get like the first batch of data from the server? So like the first paint has like live data, then hydrate it. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Look at um, look for SSR. Okay, cool. So you preload it, and then it renders on the server, and then you hydrate it. Oh, just, you basically just swap out the hook you use? Yeah. My name is Maxi Ferreira. I work as a front-end architect at HubSculpt. So my plan for today is to build an app where you can discover and create challenges to uh, discover new places. So the biggest challenge for me is gonna be the backend. So I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna use Convex, I'm gonna use Clerk to get that out of the way, and then I'll use the rest of the time to, to polish it up. I'm most nervous about the setup stuff you're doing right now. Okay. Okay, I am, yeah. <laughs> because I'm, I, I'm seeing this, uh, it's using React here mm -hmm. in the tutorial list, uh, but I'm using Astro for my side. So I have the Clerk Astro integration. Okay. Uh, and I'm not sure if I should do the React, if I need the React package as well, or just, or I can use it just with the Astro one. I, I've done this one before. The, with Astro? Yeah, so so it depends on what you're trying to do. I just need to protect certain routes. Yeah, you so can do that. You can, can do that do without that. the React. Okay, okay, React sounds good. That's it, right? How are your plans feeling? Pretty good. 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 I see. <laughs> That's how I feel about mine. <laughs> how you feeling? I mean, the plan's great. It's the implementation. <laughs> so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to start building. You've got four hours to build your apps, and that four hours starts right now. So my plan is I want to be able to do the, like I get a list of places, right? And so I don't want to have to do this by myself. I'm going to see if I can get Raycast to pull this for me. So I'm going to try saying, uh, Give me a list of the top 10 restaurants in Portland. Cool, all right, so it is giving me good information. And so now what I wanna do is see if I can get that as JSON. So I'm gonna say, turn this list into a uh, an array of JSON objects with the following format. And then I'm going to take this array here and see if I can just get it to do my job for me so that I don't have to do any of this. <laughs> so I don't have to do as much manual data collection and I'm pumped about that. Was that Raycast I used for pick color? Yeah. Nice. It's my favorite plugin. So you use Raycast on the regular? Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. I already got data in this database. We bet we're like five minutes in. <laughs> I'm sure you'll manage to, to get this track. I'm going to figure out a way to screw this up, but like we're off to a strong start here. Maybe they use for metadata. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, yeah. And that's it, yeah. Right. And then return your response. Look at this, you're done. 
Perfect. All right, let's see if this works. Yay, now we can update our user. Oh, look. <laughs> okay, it let me look like you're done. I don't know what that is. I bet, I mean. Okay, okay. I, I thought you needed help, but apparently I, not. No, I think you guys Great. should just hire me. Great. Like, yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. You know? They make it so, like, it's, the integration really is easy, though. Like, I literally just pulled in a component and fed it some styles, and hopefully I've got it hooked up to Convex, right? You know, we're gonna test okay. that next, but, yeah. I'm amazing. Hey, Dusty. Hey, girl. <laughs> what you working on? Um, my little Foodie Trails app. I got Clerk all integrated. You wanna see? Yeah. Okay, first of all. Let me bring this up. Look at my little Oh, user. you got your user button. I didn't build and that. No, but you, you, you didn't build it, but you styled it yourself. Right, I did style it. I love that it's just there, though. Like, manager, I didn't build this page. You all just mm -hmm. gave that to me. Was I mean, it simple to um, customize it to? Are know, you kidding? Yeah. Style. Like, I just gave a style object. Here, let me show, let me show you what I did. Okay, let's see it. So my clerk styles, mm -hmm. so defined all my little variables, targeted some elements, switched up mm -hmm. some font weights and some things, and then mm -hmm. literally just pass, pass it, it to the client uh, right there. To the Boom. clerk provider, perfect. And like that, Your so. Your entire app is now styled with those tiles. Like, so easy. Continue with Google, like all of this, just straight yeah. out of the box. Got my convex integrated, and it's, uh, Fetching some data, it's also okay. integrated with Clark. That was really easy, like you guys, mm -hmm. you guys go together, you're real cute together. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I like how it's going. Oh, thanks. I'm excited. Thanks, don't steal my theme. If I see that theme <laughs> pop up on Clark. <laughs> um, so I am, I've gotten the point where I can kind of like show my lists and then you can create a list but it's not tied to a user account yet. So okay, I gotcha. just got my clerk stuff set up here. Perfect. Um, so that's all like set up. But what I haven't done yet is I need to get into my lists here. I've got it set up like they're they're connected now. I've got my, my uh, Jot template and I've got it set up in here where like they're plugged in together. Mm -hmm. but I haven't yet gotten into my queries and mutations to actually pull out the user data, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. this part here that I have to put in. Gotcha. But once I get that, then I am functionality wise, I'm like, that's like 50% done. So right now you can create a list, but you can't like add anything to it. So it's, uh, I'm gonna get users hooked up so that you can like create a list and then edit your own lists. Then you'll be able to like add things to the list and that'll be functionality complete so that I can start um, actually like making it look not like this. Yeah, well, what's wrong with this? It looks beautiful. Right, exactly, right? Like who needs, it? we just, we're developers, right? We just read the JSON direct. Yeah, this is perfect. Just have JSON on a page. Everybody will understand how to use that. Exactly. So I finished setting up my convex and my clerk integration. So everything's working smoothly. Now I need to sort of combine the two words together. And I'm trying to save some of my data that is on Convex into Clerk as into well. Clerk. So yeah. Gotcha. So um, do you know what the next steps for that are? I think so. So I set up the, um, the client here, the Clerk client. So this allows me to save the public metadata using the same data that I had in Convex. Now the challenge that I'm having is that I don't know if this will work in real time, which mm -hmm. is why I wanted it to work, gotcha. but we'll see. We'll, we'll make it work. Gotcha. This might be the best integration so far. Moving That's forward. That's good to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you <hear> me? <laughs> we can hear you. <laughs> All right, John, what do we got going on? So I'm building a, a game that you can play with your friends to help you decide which restaurant that you want to go to. Mm -hmm. So, so far I've hooked up to Clerk, so each person can log in. Uh, I'm going to polish up the visuals of this game, and then I have a couple other games that I want to build. The other games are, let's see, we have Shake It, we have like a spin to win one, which is like whoever can spin the phone. like The fastest? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then another game, if I have time, it's like called like Jaro Paint. So imagine you have like a ball here, like you need to like tilt your phone to be mm -hmm. able to like paint. Paint or, the screen. Yeah, 
Nice. And so whoever wins the game, it gets it's their restaurant. Yeah. Awesome. I'm really excited to see how it turns out. Thanks. Nice. I've never heard of the Oregon Trail game. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> visit your local museum or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the original computer games. Yeah. It is? Guys. This is same what, back, Am back I in the day my when, age? Uh, when computer labs were novel, we, you know, the, the Natalie and I were in there playing around with our, our green and black screens. Damn. Yeah. Trying not to die of dysentery. The details, the crud stuff is mm. working. Look, I could, I could pretend this was done. Like it's certainly not like fully shippable, but mm. at least functionality wise, it's doing what I wanted it to do. So now it's uh, make it look nice, get more data in so that I can actually build some test lists and uh, and see if I can get it looking nice enough to demo. Great. Of all that stuff you wrote on the whiteboard, yes. all those rectangles are going to Yeah, be... the, all, the, all the rectangles will function, but they might be ugly. Got it. Okay, <laughs> great, great. <laughs> okay, Maxi, what's what's going on? Uh, well, there's a lot of red, as you will see here. Oh, yeah, <laughs> what's that about? So the challenge that I'm running into now is that I'm changing the schema as I go. I didn't do a very... Uh, well-defined model, model um, mm -hmm. domain modeling, so I'm trying to to change the database structure as I go, which, as uh, you'll see, is resulting in a, in a bunch of errors. Sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's going pretty well, I'll say. How's it going? It's going. I'm getting data. I'm doing things. I um, am not doing nearly as many things as I thought I was going to do. I don't know if you know how quick four hours goes. I mean, see three buttons. Do any of the buttons oh. do anything? Oh, they all do something. Oh. So, you know, we're going to ask some more questions. More questions. More questions. Um, it works great right up until you get to the last question. Then boom. There you go. Oh, it breaks. Okay. Okay. But don't worry. I'm going to fix that. Great. Whoa. Okay. Spin your phone. Yeah. So Does that work? This is another game, so each person has to spin their phone five times. Spin to win. <laughs> what a great way to charge your phone. <laughs> <laughs> when do we stop? Oh, oh, you're swinging the wrong way. It's going up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, 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 hey you're done. How? Oh, I, I haven't built the end game state yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just spinning for nothing. Are you done with your homework already? You yes, I'm done. I'm in a happy spot. I built 12 games. 12 games, I hate you. This is going to be the first episode with a fist fight in it. <laughs> we can jump them. Yeah. I'm thinking we, yeah. yeah. We left his computer on a 10, let's just go. Yeah, yeah. You got a big magnet? How far is the finish line right now? The fine finish line. It's relative, right? I mean, lessons have been learned. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm gonna give myself like a B minus and, and be happy about it. I think I just didn't get to the the stuff that I was hoping to for like polish and and like you know flash. I'm uh, pretty pretty good. Yeah, I'll say my my app is shaping up to be an eight or a nine, but not out of ten, of course. Uh, so I had to lower my expectations. <laughs> I, not out of 10. Yeah, not out of 10, so out of 50 or so. I had to lower my expectations by a lot, but it's something. I like the part where the inputs go like this. That's great. Across the screen. They're dynamically with, it looks like. <laughs> Listen, all of you. <laughs> Look how nice this looks. Mm, this is what I was, this is what I was focusing on. That's good. Yeah. McMinimins. Okay. Also so cute, that's great. Uh, 30 seconds is enough time to fix that input. Let's do it. Uh-oh. Well. Uh-oh. <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, no. 
No. No. Oh, no. no. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah. Did we get to the end? I would like end? to recheck all previous statements I've made. <laughs> Including being the inventor of JavaScript? I do have to take that back. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, okay. see, the problem is I did it in TypeScript. If I'd done it in JavaScript, oh, it would have been no problem. It would have been, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. Four hours, huh? Goes fast. <laughs> <laughs> if this looks like fun and you want to try it out yourself, we've got a hackathon going. We've got the URL at the bottom of the page here where you can go find out the details and join up. I can't wait to see what you build. All right, so my app is called Tasty Challenges and it's essentially a way uh, that you can join, create different challenges uh, or different restaurants in your look, whatever uh, it is that you live. And I can see that I have here my challenges, the ones that I've joined. Let's create a challenge right now. So I'm going to call it Best Pizza in Portland. There you go. So I'm going to open this challenge and now I can start adding different places to it. So Jason, what are your favorite uh, pizza places? Just give me. Uh, there's one called Demos. The most a pizza, all right. And then you could put in uh, like East Gleason. East Gleason pizza. With these two, I can focus them on the map. I can see what, where, where they are. And then I can uh, join the challenge. And when I join the challenge, and I'll see my progress here. And if I complete all of them, I get some confetti. <laughs> And yeah, and then this is just defining a bunch of different functions. So this is essentially my backend. This is my database schema. And the rest is just front end React code. I did struggle with my data model a little bit. I had this nested structure for my data that didn't work out of the box, but uh, I made it work like I had to, I struggled with it a little bit, but uh, it worked in the end. You had a lot of stuff that felt like it was sort of magical, right? Like when you, um, chose Portland, for example, an image of Portland showed up. Can you can you show a little bit of how that? Works? Yeah, that's using the uh, Google Places API. So, so this is the autocomplete plugin from Google, which uh, it takes a reference to an input. That is the input that I was using here when I when I created the challenge. And then, as soon as you enter a city name, as soon as you get a match, uh, it realizes that the place has changed, and you get the place from the API as well. So here I'm grabbing the first, the first photo. I get an array of photos from that place, the location, uh, the coordinates to that location, the address, and so on. And here I have this one to set that I only want to get cities in this case. So that's why if I, 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 I'm not going to get pizzerias from here. I only get actual cities. Uh, but I can change it to get restaurants as well, right. which is what I'm using in the other one. This is this is great. Yeah. I had some concerns about Maxi um, having trouble with the back end, but I think that his app was really well rounded and really well executed. I built a little text based game called Foodie Trails. It is much in the theme of the beloved Oregon Trail. We're going to see how this adventure goes. <laughs> So here I integrated the uh, clerk sign-in, like incredibly easy to integrate. I just customized their out-of-the-box component. I'm gonna continue with Google. All right, so we're just gonna go through some of these questions and let's see. It's just a few of us. My dog is always with me. <laughs> this is gonna be a surprise for all of us. <laughs> So in theory, what should happen is we should see a map load that has, uh, you know, some options. It, um, me and the Google Places API, we just weren't getting along, so. You would ha you'd had a way that you could like hard code it so we can see what the, um, the map looks like? Yeah, I broke that too. <laughs> Do you want to show us the code? No. <laughs> what do you all want to see? I definitely, like I was going to roll my own auth, we all know that, but I decided to use clerks and it's so easy. Like, I mean, you got to give other people a chance to shine from time to time, you know. It's only fair, it's only right. So, so like, let's look at like the sign in page. Like, I, as a matter of fact, I don't even need these, that's extra. Mm -hmm. Like, that was how I added my sign in page. And then in the nav bar, like to get either that sign in link or uh, that user button, that's all we did. And I'm using the convex auth because, again, want to make sure that if they're accessing my data, I know who they are. Potential, but 
let's just say big dreams, little maps. I am very surprised that I didn't get everything done that I thought I was gonna get done. Like I'm a scrappy startup girl, I work fast, but I don't work whole app in four hours fast. Okay, so my idea was to make an app that I am calling a nice little day out. I got it set up where you get signed in. And so we can create a list and it would be like, I don't know, a downtown adventure. And then you could say like, what to do in downtown Portland. Um, and you can see I, I didn't get as far as I wanted to on this with like styling and stuff, but I'm happy that I got all the functionality to work. So not all this is accurate, but you know, you can pick something like, okay, we're gonna pick Jeju. And you say, why do you go here? Like delicious, or like have a delicious dinner. So then when you come back out to the home page, we have a list of the things that we can do. This is one that I was able to put a little more time into. And so this is a lovely day, a lovely all day date in Mount Tabor. If you were gonna be in this neighborhood, these are the things that I'd want you to do. So I've got kind of a map. You can see it's all clustered pretty close together. It's like a whole, you know, like a good, like morning all the way through evening that you can spend in Mount Tabor. So let's look at the code. I did a really simple like V straight setup. Um, I used React Router. Um, so I looped over my, my list and then you can add a place. And so we do this like handle adding a place. Um, so we're able to kind of loop over the options and, and build out the things that are already in the database. So I, I ended up manually adding all of this. A step two here would be to add an additional form where you could put new places into the database. Uh, I didn't know that the places API was gonna be that easy to use or I would have just implemented it. <laughs> I actually spent more time manually entering data than I think it would have taken me to just put that places API in. And the other thing that's nice is these joins. Um, so once you have like, a list, you can get your lists. And then if you want to do a join, it's the same thing. You just map over it. You run a query to get the other thing that you need. So like I have a list of place IDs. I wanted to, to expand that into the actual place. So I just go and grab that place and drop it on the, di the object. And then when I come back out to my app and I go to list my places, it's smart enough to know that the place that I expanded is part of it. So it's like auto completing all that for me. That's my app. I hit a couple roadblocks around, I, I was trying to use the Google Maps API and I was trying to use a library I'd never used before to deal with it. And so I, I burned probably 30 minutes on, on trying to get that to work the way I wanted it to, which would have probably been better spent styling the app to get more of the, the final finish that I wanted. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I, like the app was a nice touch, I think. I'm happy about that. What I built today is a app called Foodie Face Off. The problem I wanted to solve was oftentimes you, you, oftentimes you have a group of friends, you all want to go to different places, or you don't know where to go. So this app is meant to help solve that problem. The first thing I added, added was the click integration. So each of us is able to sign in and create a account. So let's have everyone do that. All right, I'm signed in. Ooh, so easy and quick. <laughs> yeah. Okay, everyone's in. So you can either manually pick a restaurant or or click the feeling feeling mm -hmm. lucky button. So as as everyone becomes ready, their status on the bottom changes. So we're oh. waiting on <laughs> Natalie and me. All right. Okay. So now there's four games built out. So now we as a group are able to pick like the game that we want to face off in. Let's go with protein shake. All right, get ready. Click that button, then shake. Oh man! And then, as we shake, <laughs> all of our scores are, are loaded up there. <laughs> I'm so blind! So, I won. Thank you. Boo. <laughs> Inside of here, I'm using uh, live blocks for like all of the real-time stuff. Here's, here's the part where like we enumerate through all of the game options, then people are able to pick their game. And then, as people are picking their games, we basically just render their profile picture on top of the choice, so like you're able to see what other people are picking. And then as people, like once everyone's voted, like we basically enter into a countdown component and this is the component that, that does like the three, two, one. And this is the component that's also responsible for like deciding like how many people voted for each game and then picking, picking, picking the game that was voted, voted the most. I have a bunch of hooks, which, which are like the recipes. So I have like a use device rotation count, use device rotation, use device shake, use stopwatch and use timer. Okay. Uh, for, for, for the rotation count, 
Uh, most, most devices have an API called uh, device orientation event, and, and you're basically able to listen to all of the events that get uh, propagated as the device moves. Got it. And then for like a rotation, I basically, uh, let's see, where's that code? Uh, here's, here's some math to figure out like how many times like a device has actually rotated. So this is just recording like the angular difference as your device rotates. Okay. You got an irritating amount of stuff done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you build these hooks off the top of your head or did you have the help with the use of AI? AI helped a lot. Okay, that's what I thought. I was able to get everything I wanted to get done. Uh, I got laughs out of, out of everyone, and that was my goal of going into this. So yeah, I think it went pretty well. The other concerns that I had, like John making a multiplayer game, he actually was the first one finished. So those concerns were completely invalid. I saw. I also uh, I saw that Natalie was continuing to code and got her app working as uh, as we were seeing other I demos. I have a map. <laughs> can we see it? But can we see it? I don't want to do it on the video anymore. But. <laughs> There it is. Well, it's a beautiful, oh, wow. it's a styled map. You customize the styling of the map. It's incredible. You can get wow. in-game directions, or you can use your own. Trust like... me, it's so cool. <laughs> All right, say cheese. I was really surprised by the, the quality of everyone's app. Like everyone built really cool apps. Uh, we were all, even though the, the theme was the same for everybody, everyone, uh, everyone come up with their original idea for their own app. So uh, yeah, I was really happy to see that. I don't think I had any like hardships to overcome. I used a tech stack that I was familiar with, so I didn't have like that initial learning curve to overcome during this challenge. Part of the thing that I wanted to learn today was was using more more of like uh, like mobile devices physical like sensors. Today was the first time for me to like use like the device's rotation and, and like device's motion. Those are two sensors that, that typically a lot of websites and a lot of web apps don't use. So if you are able to use that, use those two inputs in like a tasteful way, I'm sure it's able to elevate a bunch of uh, a bunch of different types of experiences. I don't know, it was a new challenge though. It was fun. I'd never done anything like a text-based game and I probably could have did a little more pre-planning, but I wanted to give the people authenticity. I wanted to, you know, give an accurate representation of what four hours can get you. Yeah. I started the day with about, oh, probably four times the amount of data I had, and then I realized that that was getting in the way of progress. So, you know, about halfway through, I decided to rework my data entirely which also kind of reworked my plan, so that was fun. The worst kind of competitor is the one that you really enjoy, like you like them as a person, and the, the only thing that's irritating is that they're really good at something. And I feel like everybody here today was like, like, you know, Natalie was talking crazy shit, and I was ready, I was like, I was like, all right, let's go. Uh, you know, Maxie is just like quietly over there building something cool, and then John is, he got, he's like not smug, but he's definitely satisfied. <laughs> and I was like, you little, you little punk. <laughs> Yeah, it was great to see people using that auth information on the back end and on the front end all together, making, yeah, some really interesting apps, interesting applications of uh, personal state versus a shared state with everybody. It sounded at first like people might have bit off more than they can chew, but everything turned out really good and everybody's ideas were super creative and I think they executed really well. 